presentations from the Green PB Caravan recorded on the 17th of November 22 concerning youth participation. Minutes of setting the scene about why we're here and the first image I've got up is um, some of the youth climate workshops that we did in, in fact, West Cumbria as part of a series of citizens juries on climate change. So as part of that, we set up some spaces uh, and a toolkit. So youth workers went out into different youth settings and got feedback uh, and ideas and young people did sort of exercises to to really start to grapple and learn about climate change. So we've got a sort of a bit of a background in not youth work itself, but working through others. So in this case, we used local youth workers to support that project. Um, and, and obviously, we know that a couple of years ago, there was the, the Scotland's Climate Assembly. And alongside that, there was a specific programme for children and young people to also feed into that Climate Assembly. So in terms of kind of democratic innovations, we're already seeing this, this, this awareness that young people need to be involved, youth need to be involved, but maybe they need slightly different processes and spaces in which to engage. So there, but there is some really great history in Scotland of working um, with young people on the climate theme. And then obviously, you know, we know that there's been a lot of development of, of youth empowerment work through the PB Scotland project over a number of years um, uh, and, and some of the real innovations in terms of lowering voting ages and adult processes and then all the great work that's been done and the links with school-based PB. So there's been such a fertile territory, that's all I can say, in Scotland. So there's a lot of good reasons why Scotland could be leading this, this journey of youth PB. Um, however, this is my doom-laden slide. This is some of the reasons why I think we need to do this. So the top left image is the Raft of the Medusa by Jericho, which is a famous image, which is about whether when the disaster strikes, how are we going to react? Are we going to start deciding who we're going to throw off this raft? Are we going to pull together? What we know is, as in the second picture, that we're really leaving a world that is quite scary and frightening. Um, we could all become very anxious about that, and, and many young people are very anxious about that, and a lot of the research sorts and seems to show that they don't really think that adults get it at all. Um, but perhaps more hopefully, they are our bridge to the sort of future that we could hope we could imagine, where maybe we have a closer and more connected relationship with nature. So, and I was just getting onto this one, which was purely the, the Youth PB project that I was involved with for a couple of years, looking at different cases. Uh, and that's partly why Karin's here today, although I had connections before. So, we did a lot of work. There were a lot. Courses. There was a toolkit about youth involvement in PB. Um, but I think one of the really important things was around the, the, the values developed and the importance of working through values and developing those sorts of um, developing a, a, a concept of, of a youth led PB rather than a PB for young people. So I think that's all I wanted to do for now was just set that little bit of a scene. And I was going to just now just get Karin to come in and stand going to hand to Karin. So do you want to introduce yourself? Please. Say what you'd like. Um, OK, I'll say who I am and then I'll share screen and um, let me know if it works. So my name is Karen Aben and I work in a small town called Gava, which is in County Derry in, in Northern Ireland with a population, the town, the village, we, the people say it's a town, but actually technically it's a village, just under 1,500 people, but a large hinterland. Um, the village itself is majority Protestant and the hinterland is, is majority Catholic nationalist. And the, the project that I've been involved in the last five years has actually come to an end, has been the Garva People's Forest Project, that has been the forest as a kind of shared uh, space for, for growing relationships. So I'm just gonna um, share, screen. 
Is that okay for everyone? Yeah, you should be seeing a map. Mm -hmm. okay. um, so I suppose this is a map of the forest, um, which is that little green blob in the middle that looks a bit like an ear, and the, the catchment communities around the forest, which has been the focus of the Gava People's Forest Project. And we've been using the metaphor that the trees and produce oxygen, but in also the metaphor of, of the, the forest becoming a, a point of oxygen and, and regeneration and relationship building around well-being and, and learning and, and, and community. So the, the forest big dish out, which is a tiny, tiny, do not get excited, the tiny participatory budgeting um, process that we did in, in 2019. And there's been just a whole series of tiny little steps, um, which is what I wanted to kind of quickly share with you. So, uh, hold on, Let's see if I'm going to get this working. Um, so really quickly, the, the forest, um, just to give you some context, is not a big forest. It's 200 football pitches or 160 Gaelic pitches um, big. It was part of the um, estate of a, a family that their land was either given to or stolen from, depending on your political outlook in the 17th century as part of a plantation process um, in Ireland. And the, the pyramid was built by one of the lords in the 18th, 19th century. He went to Egypt and saw the pyramids and said, why not? I want one of those in Gava um, to show how important I am. So that's in the, the forest. There's also a river. Um, so the forest is a, is a broadleaf forest at the heart of, of, I suppose, this catchment community. The other thing I wanted to say is that the, the Gava People's Forest project of the last five years has been an emergent process. Um, around well-being and learning and community and creativity um, and fundamentally about that shift from extractive relationship to the more than human world to a stewardship commoning relationship. So that's, and it, over the last kind of few months, we have, I suppose, increasingly made sense of that using the donut um, in terms of donut economics and really starting to use a donut around how do we have those integrated conversations in one place about how no one falls into the hole in terms of well-being and poverty issues, but how do we live in a way that doesn't crash through their nine life support system. The donut has been a really um, useful model. So the Forest Big Dish Out um, was really, it, it was a very last minute project in some senses. We were suddenly given some money, not a big money, it was only about a um, thousand pounds and we raised a little bit more money. And it's, and I've been, I have a history prior to 2019 around participatory budgeting and I thought let's just go for this. Um, so we literally had from April to, to June we were able to, to deliver fast because part of the Gava People's Forest project has been that relationship between the six primary schools in terms of outdoor learning. So we had the structures in place and we had the relationships in place with the teachers and the schools to say, let's just give this a go. So part of, so it started in kind of April. So in April, we had a series of workshops with the volunteers um, who help at the forest school and, and the teachers and the principals, just to kind of give a sense about what PB um, has been about. And then in May, we started engaging with the children in the forest. And we there's a number of the props that we used. So for example, we had kind of little ideas and big ideas, so Robin Hood and, and Batman, <laughs> so um, Robin and Batman. So it was kind of given the sense to the children that you can have little ideas that you can make possible for 160 pounds, but there'll be big ideas and those are equally worthwhile. So the, those two figures were about reflecting that. We had a fishing net in terms of let's go and catch the ideas, let's go and talk to other people, let's go and find what you would love to make happen. The sieve was about sieving through, the kind of making a distinction between the little ideas and the big ideas, so literally kind of sieving and looking at some of the criteria about others feasible um, and we also had a picture frame about how do we communicate so we used a lot of objects to kind of start to to make sense of what PB is about with the kids um, and then I suppose we had kind of then we had five sessions with the children over a period of six weeks in the forest um, really starting to develop what they would love to make happen that would contribute to the well-being of the forest and the well-being of people so it was kind of keeping those those two things together um, so eventually we had 18 bids kind of coming through from across the six schools and then we had the the big voting event in in the forest um, so that one there we had a series of picnic blankets so the 18 teams had a little picnic blanket a little snack to keep them going and we had about 150 um, uh, voters kind of coming through and that's one of the um, one of the pitches for from from the kids there so the kids went round um, and had chats with each of the 18 teams at their picnic blanket, they made notes, they kind of asked questions and so on. 
um, and you can see some of the kind of the presentations about how the children were were talking about some of their some of their ideas there. The polling station is a bit blurred, but it gives you a sense of the polling station was um, um, at the back, and um, the kid, everyone used past the shells, so they had five past the shells in terms of kind of multiple votes. Uh, you can see the, the ballot boxes there. Um, the police officer there is, is useful to kind of make note of because in terms of some of the politics of, of the North, there's, there's still kind of a historical legacy about um, the presence of, of police officers and so on. So the fact that the a police officer there, and we also engaged some civil servants and some kind of um, others. So there was a real sense of kind of building relationships um, around this. But at the end, we had the kind of the vote and the results, and um, we had a local kind of credit union who printed us some checks. So you can so the dog run. So that was really about how can children um, develop a, a, a kind of a, a place for to have fun with their dogs that doesn't actually impact on any of the the biodiversity of the forest. So that was that bit. That gives you some more senses. So the guy with the yellow hat was a senior civil servant in one of the departments. Um, Luckily, there was sun shone and it was beautiful weather. You can kind of see more photos there of taking notes. Um, so we had the six kind of um, winning bids were um, a forest pirate ship, um, how to kind of play forest football using kind of recyclable um, materials to kind of make, make footballs, a dog run as you saw, um, a bird house and, and play. So a lot of the ideas were about play, and, and how to kind of play in a way that it doesn't make an impact in terms of kind of um, leave no trace. So at the end of the, the project, we had six winning ideas and then over September to December, and then we were struck by COVID, we had a, an after schools club where all the children who had their winning bids came together over a series of, of three months to really kind of collectively work together about how to start making real their, their ideas and bids. And it was a sense of kind of teamwork. We also worked with a circus school and the forest service and so on. So we used every opportunity to bring adults and, and, and other kind of organizations into the kind of the play space. And I suppose this was at the core of the Forest Big Dish Up. It was about play. It was about curiosity. It was about kind of the children being the lead around really kind of making sense of that that stewardship kind of relationship. Um, so that was um, that's kind of me in terms of giving you a sense of the the forest big dish out. Um, when we did a lot of the feedback with the the children at the end, there was some fascinating kind of feedback in terms of the actual voting event and. You know, there was a complaint from one of the teams that the um, the team that were wanting the, the dog run in the forest, they had bought a lot of fluffy little puppies, toy puppies. And there was a big complaint that that would obviously, you know, um, skew the, the, the voting because they had bloody little fluffy puppies and all the kids went, oh, what beautiful fluffy puppies. So it started a really interesting conversation about communications and, 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 and voting and, and, and what sways people's decisions and all that kind of stuff. So there were some really interesting conversations about decision making and how we make decisions and what, what influences how we make decisions. Um, in some of the cases, some of the kids said, you know, the adults were kind of telling us that's a far more sensible idea and those are really crazy ideas over there. You know, so again, who was kind of yeah so those are the feedback i suppose is always is actually where the meat and the the richness of the process really kind of comes through in terms of people's reflections so that's me thank you, thank you karin and, and i think what out of that is that quote which i've used quite a lot which is or, and i stole from someone else which is the money is the bait not the fish that actually it's about drawing people to a process and then it's about what you do with the relationships and the connections and, and how you spin that out. And, and you also went on to develop the Common Possibilities project, which was an adult based one, but I'm sure with lots of used involvement. Is there worth just saying a couple of minutes about that? Yeah, so the, the Common Possibilities um, was a, a part of um, £10,000 that we have just kind of completed. Um, started last year and that was really really kind of making explicit about where the ideas were around the donut so we brought to life the donut through a pb kind of process um and and yes i mean one of the you know when one of the, you have a story that you know is so perfect in so many ways but it did and then you you worry that you're going to commodify it but one of the amazing bids was um from a 10 year old girl who noticed i showed you the pyramid so 
there was a, a mound, it's a, a hill you have to climb to the pyramid. And she noticed that her granddad was struggling to climb up the hill to see the pyramid. So her bid was a feasibility study, she didn't call it that. Um, but for £50 only to see about putting in a handrail up the mound to the pyramid. Um, the council miraculously listened um, and, and they worked with her and sat down with her. There was a series of meetings between um, the little girl and the council officer and the council put in the handrail about kind of four months ago. So there's a lot in that story and for the council officer it was the first time sitting with a young person, taking her seriously and then actually putting it into place. Um, so a lot of boxes were, were ticked and there was a number of those kind of bids where young people were started to be treated as equals with um, decision makers and local authorities or and the forest service for tiny bits of money but as again it's the relationships it's a transformation of relationships that's the core of this not not the money because we're talking about tiny monies for most pbs in northern ireland still at this point thank you karen that was great and i hope everybody now goes on to listen to the podcast that accompanies these uh, slides for the pb caravan uh, for climate in Scotland, recorded on the 17th of November 2022.